Brooks Jr. says he doesn't understand. SOL. What's going on, everyone? This is Christian Duke. You're watching Everything Else Channel on YouTube, everythingelsechannel.com. If at any point during this video you like it, smash that like button. Also, please comment and subscribe. And when you subscribe, ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video. It'll really help out the channel. When Gerald Brooks rejected the public defenders that he had, he had two great attorneys by his side. And he didn't want them because he wanted all the spotlight. He wanted to be able to badger Erica Patterson. He wanted to be able to become famous. He wanted to be able to, uh, you know, sing, woe is me, you know, play the victim. When he was the aggressor, he was the one that killed six people and injured and maimed 80 and wreaked havoc on an entire community, a country in the world. It was him. But once he was his own attorney, and even though he had all the great notes from the PDs, and even though he had those boxes of evidence, he wasn't able to go through all the boxes. Not the court's problem. The prison wouldn't let him use a tablet whenever he wanted to do legal research. Not the court's problem. He didn't understand a lot of the procedure. Not the court's problem. He didn't want to consent. Not the court's problem. You know, he was unruly. He got sent to another uh, courtroom. Not the court's problem. You know what I mean? You want to be your own lawyer. All right. But don't later say, you know, you, you weren't pro se, you were pro pauper. Don't let, I mean, look, point is very clear. You rejected counsel. Judge Doral asked you one, two, three, four, five times, whatever times, made it abundantly clear what that meant. You're a grown up. You understood. And this happens not just in this trial. It happens in a lot of trials where criminal defendants reject counsel, want to be their own lawyer. And usually it, it does not work, usually because they have no legal training. Now, the one time that I think, you know, it didn't work, but, uh, but it proved to be somewhat uh, troublesome for the state was when Ted Bundy represented himself. Now, he was a law student, and there were times where, you know, he made some pretty good arguments, even though he was guilty of sin and conviction was only a question of time. He understood legal procedure. He understood how to question people. He understood how to research. And he was such a good researcher that one time, too many, they left him unsupervised in a law library and he escaped. And then he went on to kill more people. And that's why, you know, they don't do that anymore. You know, they don't, you know, uh, yeah, you're a criminal defendant. You're your own lawyer. We're going to treat you like a lawyer. We're not going to watch you. Yes, it's a good move. Um, the reality of the matter, though, is that Jarrell was constantly asking the judge to explain legal theory to him and, and almost asking her for legal advice. Even though he said he wasn't doing that, that's exactly what he was doing because he didn't understand. And he thought that by saying he didn't understand and constantly interrupting her, that that would somehow make her feel like the world of public opinion was going to turn on her or turn on the prosecution because this, this, this man that was accused did not understand. And it, it would look like a rush to judgment. It would look like he was incompetent. It would look like they were taking advantage of him. When in reality, they thoroughly explained to him that if he rejected counsel, that that very thing could happen. And he consented to it. To deny him to represent himself might have created an issue for an appeal. So they made sure that he understood full and well what it meant to represent himself. And he said that's what he wanted to do. So he can't then turn around and stall and hijack the proceedings if and until the judge or the prosecution or any other member of the state explains to him to the point that he understands and then he can give informed consent. That's not how it works. In his mind, that's how it works but that's not how it works. So again, I, I, I honestly don't know what the judge could have done to have explained that point and that outcome to him better than she did. Because I think the judge did a fantastic job. You've often heard me say, I give her a 97. A 97 is an A. That's a really good score. You can hang your hat anywhere with a 97. It's not a hundred because I don't think she did a perfect job. I have found little instances and you guys have pointed out little instances like when she would leave the courtroom or when she told her all she was scared of them or the fact she gave him so much latitude to question uh, witnesses, many of which were victims. The fact that 
she let him recall witnesses so many times. The fact that she went above and beyond not to admonish him in front of the jury, even though he really deserved it a lot of the times, she kept giving him outs so that she wouldn't have to do that because she wanted to do the absolute best job possible to ensure a fair trial. But with this piece of crap, you know, she couldn't do it half the time. But doesn't mean that she didn't try. So that's why she doesn't get the 100. But a 97 is a great score. It's a fantastic score. It's an A. It's excellence. I don't know that any other judge could have explained to this guy more what would have happened. You know what I mean? Uh, than what Judge Joro did. But he was just so consumed with being at the center of it all and being in the driver's seat, no pun intended, that he literally, you know, got what he got. But even if he would have kept the PDs, even if he would have gotten the dream team that OJ had, he still would have been found guilty. Because he was guilty. I mean, it's not just because he was guilty. It was because of the gravity of the crime. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, he was going to be going away forever no matter what. But, but it would have been a different outcome. He might have been able to see the bleakest of the bleakest of the bleakest of the bleakest of light of a possible parole, even though he would never get it if he had kept those lawyers. Possibly. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he would have been able to get somehow, if everything went his way, which I don't see how it could have, but if everything, maybe he would have been able to get uh, concurrent terms. But again, I, I that that's, that's you know, but, but again, uh, at the very least, those attorneys would have understood everything that was going on. They would have been able to, to lodge good objections. They would have been able to stall the process procedurally, not the way that Jarrell did by extortion, by, uh, you know, uh, outbursts, uh, by contempt maneuvers. Uh, you know, they, you know, essentially they would have been able to stall it if that's what they wanted to do. But again, stall it for what purpose? What would the end game have been? You can solve proceedings by filing objections, getting continuances, uh, you know, making discovery requests, if that's your goal. But what is the point of prolonging or, or putting off the inevitable? He was going to be found guilty. He was guilty. He was 100% guilty. But, uh, you know, he would have understood or, or his counsel would have understood. Um, but, I mean, again, it's, it's just one of those things. You know, you, you can only, and you know, you know, he says he's far from stupid. Well, he is stupid, but he's uh, intelligent enough to understand, uh, I believe, what the judge was telling him when it came uh, time to decide whether he's going to represent himself or not and whether or not he was going to fire counsel or not. And uh, he may not have liked the outcome. He may not have liked the fact that they told him it was going to happen and it happened. But uh, the fact that he didn't understand uh, was not grounds for him to interrupt incessantly the way that he did. And uh, it's not the court's problem. It's not the prosecution's problem. It's his problem. And so that's just the reality of the matter. So I would love to know what you guys think. I can't imagine you're going to think differently. But if you do, leave a comment down below. You will never be censored here at everythingelsechannel.com, everything else channel on YouTube. Once again, please like and please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video. Thanks again, guys.